So now that we know the issues with this home, it's time to get started fixing them. At the start of this investigation, all evidence was pointing toward a leak of some kind, either from the outside through the roof or possibly a pipe dripping somewhere. The homeowners were stumped, but they quickly discovered that whatever the cause, the result was mold and it needed to be taken care of. Chris Johnson from Service Master has lots of experience in mold removal, mitigation, and prevention. He and his crew examined the problem and came up with an assessment. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, I would classify this one as a three. Uh, there wasn't a lot of square footage affected, but it was sporadic in three different areas of the home. So we were able to set up three different chambers in order to get the small square footage that was affected. We had the laundry room, and on the back side of the laundry room, we had a spare bedroom. And then across the hallway from the other bedroom was another spare bedroom. From what we were told and what we found up in the attic, it looks like when Duratio hit, the amount of pressure in the attic separated the dryer vent pipe and the PVC pipe venting through the roof. And so that was adding moisture into the attic cavity, which caused microbial growth in the wall cavity between the bathroom and the bedroom and uh, microbial growth in the attic as well. The power of a windstorm caused the initial damage, but the bigger issue definitely became the atmosphere for microbial growth it created. The problem and the scope were now identified, but as Chris tells us, there's a very particular order in which steps are taken to fix the issue. This ensures it's done in a safe way and reduces the impact on the rest of the house, and more importantly, the people who live here. Upon initial inspection, we saw the damage to the home uh, we wrote a scope of work as far as an estimate to what was needed to be done. Uh, basically, a lot of mold jobs, the prep is longer than the actual work that needs to be done because we have to put floor protection, uh, containment barriers. We set a dehumidifier, uh, air scrubber with a HEPA filter in it, and then we create negative air so all the contaminants go out and doesn't cross-contaminate the rest of the home. So once all the containment is set, then they would get their appropriate uh, PPE on, and then we would start cutting the affected wall. And once we find it, we generally go two feet past where we don't see it anymore so that we know that we have it. And once that's done, we would uh, tear the affected area out and then we would HEPAVAC the area and then we spray an antimicrobial. And if it's really bad, we'd come back the next day and possibly seal any stained type of wood or damaged structural materials. Basically, the spores, you know, they grow in the very humidic, dark atmosphere. And from what we're seeing from the storm and just any other type of accident that may happen in the home, it just needs that high humidity to feed off those spores. And a lot of people don't know it until they're doing a house inspection or they take a piece of baseboard off but a lot of people will have medical issues as far as their breathing or burning of the eyes, itching, trouble sleeping. We get a lot of that. While this problem wasn't as extensive as some, it still had the potential to impact the health and well-being of the homeowners and their family members. It took about a three-day time frame for Chris and his team to safely remove the impacted wall and attic materials and mitigate the growth of the mold. Then it's time for reconstruction. So once our job is done as far as mitigation goes, then the reconstruction process starts. So they'll want to get a contractor in here that does drywall, paint, insulation, uh, electrical if that was affected, new baseboard, and sometimes if it gets into the carpet, we, re we remove the pad. If mold is on the carpet, we do recommend removing all the carpet, but once again, it just depends on how far the mold had gone. The hard truth about mold is that once the spores are present, it's virtually impossible to eliminate them completely. Observation and diligence are a homeowner's best defense when keeping mold at bay, as well as reaching out for help when you need it. Generally what we recommend is when we're completed with the job, it'd be a good idea to have a hygienist come and do like a post test to make sure that we got all of the contaminants out of the rooms affected. Uh, some people go that route and some people just have us come back in two to three months and we just do an on-site inspection. The average cost, that's a very tough question to answer because every job is so different. Uh, it basically has a lot to do with how many rooms are affected, square footage, uh, what's the severity of the damage. It's just, I've done jobs from a thousand all the way up to six figures, depending on how much damage there is to the house. So it's hard to pinpoint that. For customers that are looking for people like us to do quality work, 
um, I would recommend they check the Better Business Bureau. In our industry, we use uh, the IICRC, which is a governing body that we have all our technicians take classes and we're licensed to do, whether it's water, fire, or mold mitigation. That's what I would start with first. Having professionals help you will give you peace of mind and help keep your family safe. Don't let a hidden problem in your home jeopardize your health or the integrity of your structure. Now that you know more about mold, check out our additional information on improving the air quality in your home on our website at powerhousetv.com.